Franz Liszt has been called the most vivid personality in the history of music. He was also known as the Prince of Pianists. He was undoubtedly one of the greatest pianists who ever lived. Liszt was also a great teacher. His amazing skill was passed on to generations of pupils to become a lasting influence in music. Liszt also was a champion of romanticism in music. His long life, from 1811 to 1886, included the 1830s and the 1840s, a high point in the Romantic period. During these years, Liszt knew writers and composers of the Romantic school. George Sand, Victor Hugo, Paganini, Chopin, and many others. Liszt's own music, as well as his playing, reflected the ideals of Romanticism. It is emotional, colorful, poetic. Often it is music that tells a story, depicts a dramatic scene, or interprets a mood. The Hungarian Rhapsody to which we are listening is an example of romantic music. It appeals to the heart as well as to the mind. Romantic music reflects the spirit of nationalism. In the gypsy folk music of Hungary, Franz Liszt found much inspiration. Hungary was his native land, and the life story of Liszt begins in Hungary in 1811. Franz Liszt was born in the village of Riding, Hungary, where his father was an employee of the celebrated Esterhazy family. At one of the Esterhazy palaces in Eisenstadt, an important event in Franz's boyhood took place. This fabulous palace was the country home of Prince Esterhazy, patron of poets, painters, and musicians. It was here, in a setting that reminds us of a fairy tale, that nine-year-old Franz was brought by his father to play for the prince. With this visit, the boy pianist began his amazing career. After his success here, the next stop was Vienna. Here he played a series of concerts. One of his audiences included the great master Beethoven, who said of the boy Liszt, he will be heard from. After studying music in Vienna, Liszt and his father made their way to Paris, the great capital of culture in Europe. Unable to enter the Conservatory of Paris because of his foreign birth, Liszt studied with private teachers in Paris. He was being compared to the boy prodigy Mozart. Within the next few years, he gave concerts in England, the French provinces, in Switzerland, and then again in Paris. In Paris, Liszt came under the influence of other composers. At the Paris Opera, he heard the playing of Paganini, the great violinist. The music we're hearing is by Liszt, based on a violin caprice by Paganini. Liszt was dazzled by Paganini's great skill, and he was impressed too by this orchestral work by Hector Berlioz, the Symphonie Fantastique, a romantic composition. Hector Berlioz was an important figure in Paris a member of a circle of people that included Parisian aristocracy. In 1834, in her Paris home, Liszt met the Countess Dagou, a brilliant woman, who was one of the great loves in his life. Liszt often performed for friends gathered at her home. Berlioz later described these informal concerts in his memoirs.
but admiration was not enough. Liszt wanted to study, to learn more. From 1835 to 1840, he traveled in Switzerland and Italy. At Geneva, Switzerland, Liszt lived for a time studying philosophy at the University of Geneva. He was interested, too, in classical literature, especially the writings of Dante. Dante's Divine Comedy was the inspiration for the Dante Sonata, which we are hearing now. The strange and agonizing world of the Inferno was translated by Liszt into music that excites the emotions. Liszt not only wrote original compositions, he transcribed the works of other composers. In these transcriptions, Liszt took many orchestral and vocal works and arranged them for the piano. Thus, he helped to bring the music of other romantic composers to a wider audience. Liszt also found inspiration in the other arts. In sun-drenched Italy, for example, in the town of Pisa, he saw beautiful architecture. At Pisa, he also visited the cemetery, the Campo Santo. There he gazed upon a medieval painting on the triumph of death. This somber theme he translated into his eloquent Totentanz, the dance of death. But it was life, not death, that Franz Liszt poured into most of his music. From Italy with its warm and beautiful landscapes, from cities rich in beauty and history, he was ever gathering the sights and sounds that would go into his romantic music. I live, he said, not in myself, but I become a portion of that around me. In Rome, in the Sistine Chapel, Liszt studied the works of Michelangelo and other artists. He said, Michelangelo and Raphael make me better understand Mozart and Beethoven. Constantly seeking to understand himself, Liszt turned more and more to religion, which had always interested him. On one hand, he sought meditation and spiritual experience. On the other hand, he could not forget his world fame as a performer. Once again, he decided to make a tour. Through the beautiful Rhineland country, wherever he went, he was acclaimed. The tour took him to many cities, such as historic Koblenz. In Cologne, he played in ceremonies celebrating the completion of the cathedral. In Bonn, he played for a Beethoven celebration. After being heard in nearly every major city in Europe, Liszt brought his concert tours to an end. Liszt was now more famous than ever. The music we are hearing is the Concerto No. 1 in E-flat. It is among the many important works Liszt composed in the town of Weimar, Germany, where he settled in 1848. The master study in Weimar became the center of his teaching and composing. Yet, success did not seem to offer satisfaction. The influence of religion was stronger than ever. And so Liszt returned to Rome, the great religious center of Europe. Here, in 1865, the composer decided to become a member of the priesthood. Liszt, the prince of pianists, became the Abbe Liszt. For the rest of his life, he was busy both in Rome and in Weimar. Here, pupils from many parts of the world came to study under Liszt, some of them to become renowned pianists in their own right. Liszt was, as always, the great teacher. He never accepted fees for his teaching, but was content to help and encourage pupils who showed promise. Always a champion of others, Liszt not only encouraged his own pupils, but also young composers. The career of Richard Wagner was greatly helped by Liszt. And it was in Wagner's home in Bayreuth, Germany, 
that Liszt spent his last days. Here he no doubt pondered on the meaning of life and the meaning of music. Many elements had gone into the making of his music. Classical literature had furnished some themes, as had the poetry of romantic writers. There was the influence of religious experiences and the influence of the music of other romantic composers. His own unique contribution to music was the symphonic poem, of which Les Préludes is a good example. In the romantic tradition, Les Préludes translates a dramatic idea into music. Of this symphonic poem, Liszt wrote, what is life but a series of preludes to that unknown song of which the first note is death? In a way, Les Préludes sums up his music and his life. Once Liszt had written, I have felt that the various aspects of nature did not pass before my eyes like meaningless pictures, but that they evoke profound emotion within my soul. Liszt was talking about impressions, impressions that evoked music. This was the theory that was to affect much of the music of the future.